Malam Mele Kiari says the Nigerian National Petroleum Company Limited, NMPCL, can never declare loss again as he assured that Port Arcot refinery will begin production by the end of March. I am Bola Oba and this is Plus Politics. The Nigerian National Petroleum Company Limited and MPCL will never declare loss again, according to the Group Chief Executive Officer, Malamele Kiari. He gave the promise in Abuja at a book launch. Kiari also assured that the Port Arcot refinery would begin production by the end of March. He gave the assurance after a meeting with the Senate Ad Hoc Committee investigating the various turnaround maintenance projects of Nigerian refineries. Quote, in the next two weeks, production will start. We did mechanical completion of Port Arcot. That was what we said in December 2023, unquote. On the Wari refinery, Kiari said mechanical works had, had been completed adding that the facility was undergoing the regulatory compliance processes. He, however, said Cardona would not be ready until December. Kiari said all the crude lines were active, adding that over 450,000 barrels had been delivered into the Port Harcourt refinery. Joining us for this topic is an oil and gas expert, Nick Agule, also joining us is an economics belong on Lord Jede and a lawyer, Are Dotu. Hello, gentlemen, and welcome to Plus Politics. Okay. Uh, uh, welcome to Plus Politics. Hello, um, good evening. Can you hear me? Fantastic. I can hear you. I was, I, I was thinking maybe your device was muted. How would yes. you want to, what would be, what would be your initial response to the remarks by Malamele Kiari? Okay, uh, uh, thank you very much. Uh, the news that uh, the group CEO of NMPC Limited has passed to us, I would say is good news. Good news in the sense that we have been expecting them to come back again with uh, a start date for production. Uh, you recall that uh, last year, uh, towards the end of last year, they came with the news that uh, the Potaco refinery had on uh, had uh, achieved mechanical completion. And we said that mechanical completion does not mean the refinery is now ready that they were going to go through electrical and instrumentation completion and then test the refinery before getting it ready. I have predicted uh, on, on a program on this channel, on a different program, that we should be looking at uh, the first quarter of 2024 to see the first uh, products come off the Pohaka refinery. And uh, that is uh, coming to be the case based on this announcement that we have had. Uh, and this is because uh, even now, uh, I believe that uh, testing is still being uh, carried out at the refinery. And whether the date that we have received now, which is the end of March, is going to be feasible will depend on the result of the testing. The good thing is that uh, they already got uh, a stock of... Uh, Crude oil, based on the report issued by the group CEO of the NMPC uh, Limited, they have about 450,000 barrels of crude oil in stock. So that, that will at least take them for about, uh, if they are going at full production of uh, 60,000 barrels, 
Uh, that is going to take them about nine days of uh, production. So it, it's good news, but all fingers crossed. Let us see if this milestone will be achieved. Okay, uh, let me go to your colleague. Uh, how would you want to, what would be your initial response to the group chief executive officer of NMPCL stating that uh, one protocol referee will be will be operational, full fledged operational end of this month, and that um, Nigeria would never resort to importing fuel again. Well, it's a it's a it's a good omen. Um, it's going to bring about uh, the expected. Uh, um, production output that will serve the need of Nigerians who are really yearning for um, price reduction in fuel because whatever and however this is going to come up with the end product, the end means of all Nigerians, what Nigerians are expecting of is the price reduction and we believe that with the local production um, a whole number of um, uh, chains of production will be cut off from lifting to demorage and all that um, importation will be off. And that on its own should be able to have a, 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 a kind of a small, more about solution to the, to the expectation of our uh, name. Hello? All these issues end up to become more political. They become more political statements. Uh, if care is not taken, it becomes more political statements. Because um, before now, we have gotten a news report that uh, Potaco Refinery is already working. Now, Potaco Refinery is to work at the end of March. There's uh, no uh, need to Let me quickly interject there, sir. Uh, there, was, okay. there was no time they said Potaco Refinery was working. They said as of December 2023, that they have completed the mechanical, mechanical uh, production system of protocol refinery, and they tested it. And they, it was also in the news that there were other areas of the system to be done, and that until, say, the end of the first quarter of 2024, Production, full fleshed production, uh, would not be starting. And I guess at this juncture, there seems to be a degree, a dint of consistency. But it's not over until it's over. Until I see full production, I can't say they, they fulfilled all righteousness. But there seems to be a degree of consistency from what was said in December. To what he is saying now? Yes, yes. Um, is to is to get get the information right. The fact that the Potaco refinery mechanically um, is due to work at full capacity by March. What we are saying is that Nigerians' hope are so high, and we cannot um, be be running on this. Pr pr um, uh, projections. All we want to see is that oh, by tomorrow the 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 we are wrong. Okay, I can feel you. I I, I really I really can understand where you are coming from. Uh Mister Alejade, are you on? Yeah. Good evening. Good evening, Mister Alejade. Uh it's just yeah. it's just fair it's just fair to you to let you at least. Give us your initial initial response to the to the claims, and I'm using S after claim here, yeah. to the claims by the group chief executive officer of NMPCL that uh, in the next two weeks, a uh, potato refinery will be running running at full operational capacity, and that he uh, believes that soon enough. Nigeria would not have to to import petroleum products anymore. Your response, sir? 
Well, two weeks will come anyway. They, they are promised two weeks. Um, the, 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 the problem, in my opinion, has been that we have not been focused enough in our communications regarding this requirement. For example, we might have told the people that um, the refineries will be producing in, uh, in July. Tell them what I will be December. I might have tell them that oh, uh, it, it will not be December, I will no longer have July or September. Tell them that that December will be mechanical completion and the actual time when you go commercial. Is managed. The communication around the refineries and where they will start to operate has become disgraceful. We need a little bit more frequency around it. The Nigerians are not fools. It is better you tell them exactly what the plan is, when exactly you will start to get commercial production. Mr. Lejede, uh, you, you know what? Um, I guess from your opinion and the opinion of uh, the gentleman who spoke before you, uh, it, it is obvious to me that beyond the beyond the organic or personal problem that NMPC has, NMPCL has, NMPCL may also be battling uh, some public communications problem. Because if, um, maybe because we function from the newsroom, uh, many of the things that are making you uh, people to be disillusioned, many of those things were quite well understood by somebody like me in December. They said, and, and the gentleman who started, one of the guests, one of your colleagues who started this show was also very particular about the fact that in December they only said they were going to do mechanical completion. But from your, from your uh, remark now, and the gentleman before you, it does seem to me that NNPCL needs to up its public communications game because if educated and enlightened people like you don't quite understand them well, I guess that is instructing the disillusionment or the, the, the distrust that you seem to be expressing and the, gentleman's, the gentleman too expressed. How would you respond to that? Yeah, um, the, the, the communication needs to improve. Uh, I was a lawyer like that at some point in my career. So it is easy for me to understand issues around mechanical operation, commercial production, and all of that. But that is not the same with when you speak to the citizens in general. So the, the quality of communication needs to improve. It needs to present, it needs to present itself as transparent and honest. Otherwise, everything called credibility will be totally lost with the people. Explain it to them that you know exactly why they are spoiled from the refineries when they come back. That is what they want to do. So okay, okay, let me go to let, let me go to one of your colleagues. I, I, I'll come back to you. I, I'll come back to you, uh, Mr. Lejede. Um, okay. Are Are Yeah, I'm with you. I'm with you. Oh, oh, okay. Um, it, it does seem. <laughs> it does seem that. Yes, I'm with you. Uh, uh, yeah, it does seem that. Um, I can. I'm with you. And yeah, I can hear you from the street. The, the three of you are not particularly impressed. The even you when you were when you were starting, you said in so much as that may seem you know at least deducing from your remarks 
that in so much as there may seem to be consistency in what they said in December and the date they have given for full operational uh, this thing, that, but you still want to wait. So the element of doubt, that dint of, you know, the 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 thermos, the the thermos uh, predisposition is still there until I see the mark in his hand. I'm not going to buy the story. So, what is instructing yeah. that, if I may ask? Well, if, if, you know, we have to look at the, the nucleus um, issues surrounding NMPC. Uh, you know, not that we ought to be on the... We, 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 ought, um, we ought not to be at the level we are now as a fifth largest or either we don't know the rating that we are at the moment because we are just oil producer, uh, producing nations without capacity for local production, that is zero. Because for for the past 15 years on now, for the past 15 years on now, the NMPC uh, uh, was deliber deliberately um, killed all our foreign refineries, whereby there were payments for turnaround maintenance for this same uh, um, 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 investment that, the, that, that budgets have been marked for yearly, and there are payments for, for staff yearly. So for the past 10, 15 years, this same structure that the new administration is trying to make sure that it works, it's, it's not that maybe we are to clap for them, even if it works, because they made us suffer long before now. Okay. It was a deliberate ploy in order to, okay, to make to NLPC a moribund internal structure and encourage importation. Importation was a decoy for corruption. So if we are not now going to be leaving that uh, pedestal, I don't think those that are coming from that... I'll come back to you. I'll come back to you, but I want you, uh, whilst, you know, I'm, I'm taking the opinions of your two other colleagues, I, I want you to, to also be thinking around the fact that NMPC may also be a victim of the institutionalization of corruption in our political system. Because let's be very honest with ourselves. MMPC... I, I, I bet you agree. Uh, uh, I will come back to you. We, we, will look, we will look at... Because MMPC... Okay, uh, Nick Agule, MMPC is basically maybe a worst-case scenario. But MMPC is basically suffering what we see in Petrobras in Brazil and, uh, and in... Uh, the Mexican oil company. These oil companies, especially state-owned oil companies, may be buying Saudi Aramco. Uh, today, Saudi Aramco declared a profit of 120 something billion US dollars, uh, which uh, was reported to be more than the cumulative, the cumulative uh, profits of the four major Western oil companies, the shells of this world, the, uh, the this thing of this world. So, are we now in a situation where we are just suffering what state-owned oil companies, essentially, buying Saudi Aramco, what they normally manifest? Nick Abule. Uh, yes, uh, thank you very much. Uh, I, I think there is also a big misconception by Nigerians as to the status of the NNPC. Even the NNPC itself carries itself as if they are a regulator of the oil industry. So a lot of Nigerians actually think that the NNPC is a regulator of the oil industry and you find the NNPC making industry-wide statements. Like the last time the chairman of the NMPC was talking about uh, producing uh, 2 million barrels, which is actually Nigeria's production. The truth of the matter is that, like you have said, the NMPC is a business. The NMPC is a business just like Chevron is a business, Shell is a business, Total is a business in the oil sector. And this business is owned by the government. And unfortunately, in Nigeria, institutions are very weak. And because institutions are very weak, government enterprises don't do well. It's not only NMPC. We have seen it before. Uh, NITEL was never doing well. 
until the MTS and co came in. Uh, the steel plants are all dead. There's no one steel plant owned by the government that is working today. Uh, the same thing with the electricity. You know, the transmission company on Nigeria is owned by the government. It's a bottleneck in the electricity sector. It is just the case that when government enterprises in Nigeria are being badly managed, that is a reflection of what they are. Because, um, you know, for you to manage a successful business, first, you need to ensure that recruitment into that business is by merit. In Nigeria, nobody knows how people are recruited into the NPC. So recruitment in the NPC is by patronage. Even the, the leadership of the NPC is by patronage. And the NPC knows that as a, as a government business, they can afford to, to keep the refineries to be dead for, like my colleague said, 15, 20 years and still be paying salaries. Or if family workers, and nothing will happen. You know that kind of thing will never happen in Shell. It will never happen in Total or Ajip or Mobile. You know, so you know, we compare NMPC to the likes of Saudi Aramco, the, the world's number one oil company, uh, Petrobras in Brazil, Petronas in uh, Malaysia, and all of that. Uh, we are not comparing the, the same systems. Because in those nations, the institutions are strong, leadership is strong, when they have a business, they run the business based on business ethics. In Nigeria, anything government is anything that goes. You know, so uh, the it's NMPC, much, uh, if uh, President Tinibu actually wants to have a solution Nick. to the NMPC, hello, uh, is to privatize the company. Simply hello, just hello, the hello company. Nick. Yes. Nick, I cannot fault the logic and the facts of your submission. But even at that, look at in Brazil. The case of Lavajato, the, the car wash, this thing, that ultimately culminated in the incumbent president of Brazil spending about two years plus in jail after his first, after his first tenure. Look at the rate at which the uh, Petromex in Mexico is said to be punching below his weight when it comes, when, when, uh, the basic parameters of measuring efficiency are used. And like Riley stated, even now that they have just changed the nomenclature of NMPC to NMPC uh, Limited, we all know that is a state-owned enterprise. And a state-owned enterprise uh, is still beholding to the political class. And the political class from the legislators in the National Assembly, even in the days of the military, it was worse. But, you know, now, under democratic dispensation, from the leg legislators in the National Assembly to the uh, uh, president and the presidency, like Riley stated, people in NPC are beholden to these political, uh, po uh, politicals. So how do we expect efficiency in, in such circumstance? I'm just thinking aloud in view of your very, very uh, resoundingly convincing submission. How would you respond to? Well, I want, I want to draw our viewers' attention to the fact that uh, it's not about government ownership alone. The NLNG, that is the Nigerian Liquefied Natural gas yes. company in Boni is also government owned. The difference between NLNG, government owned, and NNPC with the limited they have added that has changed nothing, which is also government owned is the management. So here are two government owned enterprises. The NLNG is managed by the private sector who also have part ownership. The NMPC is managed by the government, and you can see the, the results. The NLNG is delivering humongous dividends, running into billions of dollars to government coffers every year. The NMPC has constituted a drain pipe of government revenues, and the NMPC is taking a share of uh, joint venture crude oil production on behalf of government, selling it, spending it, and then it is what is left, they will now go and put in the federation account. What kind of business is that? A business that 
has allowed his refineries to die, is not producing much oil, is not depending on crude oil that is produced on behalf of the federal government of Nigeria. And to uh, pay in safe salaries. Uh, and they were paying, do and they were paying full salary. Let me go to one of your colleagues. Uh, 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 Mr. Lejede. Mr. Lejede, are you still on? Is, uh, okay, l l l let me go back to Are. Are. Are the two? Okay. Yes, I'm with you. Sir. Okay. Uh, as it is, uh, how would you want to respond to the submissions of your colleague, uh, Nikagule, who believes that. Uh, the political patronage that defines the that defines the the composition of the hierarchy of NMPC, the political patronage that defines the operational methodology of NMPC relative to and he gave a lo another local example, perfect example, LNNG. Uh, look, what do you expect of uh, such an institution? How, how would you want to respond to that in view of your last uh, last opinion that I was going to to you on? Before I, I might not totally align on the premise of uh, privatizing NMPC. At the end of the day, we will we'll come back to uh, lay our grave just the way the Jenkos and the power uh, sector have now been a kind of uh, uh, fixed with issues. You know, the major problem we have is the fact that we deliberately made our institution unworkable. We believe that since corruption is habitat in every organization of government, definitely government must not work. That ideology will not make a country grow. Even if you bring the, the best of the best uh, privatized uh, 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 um, um, private company to manage our oil and gas sector, if care is not properly taken, we will end up in the belly of the lion. So I wouldn't want this to be done. What I'm appealing is the fact that let this in as much as NMPC has been incorporated like a private organization, not necessarily a regulator now, is now selling and buying just like every other uh, uh, um, um, oil and gas firm in the country, just like Shell is operational. So, but the, 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 the unfortunate thing is the fact that the structural arrangement, the internal administrative structural arrangement is confusing in NMPC. A structure that relies mainly on the and the entire staff uh, uh, base are being paid by government, and you want to pretend to us that you are a private firm, there is something missing somewhere. There will not be, there will be lack of accountability and transparency. But in view if the government must rework NMPC, let them, there is still need for a regulatory body to look into how best this in the uh, uh, current uh, management uh, 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 we need a total power of the current management. Are, I'm not seeing yet comfortable. Considering the corruption are, are, of the present management of NFTC, you can never get anything out of the out of the Nazareth of this are, are, of NFTC. Uh, Nick, yes. Nick Agule gave a very, very practical example that cannot be discountenanced. He just opposed NMPC a state-owned enterprise with LNNG, LNNG. which is another state-owned enterprise, but because of the high percent, because of the higher percentage of the private sector partners in the management and the operational operational machinery of LNNG. LNG gives Nigeria billions of dollars every year. While for so many years, MMPC was just a shell entity that was that was uh, appropriating Nigeria's return from the services provided by the private entity that were extracting uh, oil from Nigeria and all the operations where NMPC ought to be adding value. They were not adding value and they were paying operatives. They were paying people 
years after years for producing nothing in the refineries. How would you want to respond to that in view of your last submission? Well, I still want to reiterate that even at NLNG, the way NLNG uh, production uh, base was managed was as a result of the of the capacity of the management structure itself. The same management structure of joint venture with private firms, that is the same joint venture analysis that NNPC is currently having. But because there were other fragmentation that is affecting the success of NNPC, which is purely deliberate, and for the current management to still be here, you need, we have, we have good minds in Nigeria. Don't, don't always think that maybe there cannot be any good thing coming out of NNPC. But for the current management, which has failed to, to provide records of their financial uh, uh, bank, uh, 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 audited report for the past 10, 15 years, and you expect them to deliver a, a new refinery by March, and you still want that be, uh, uh, to give the best of services to Nigeria. There is a lot hidden that the president needs to let us understand. I'm not totally, I'm not fighting a personal war with uh, Kiari, but I believe its management ought to be investigated now. Okay, okay. I I'll come to that. I'll come to you again for that. Ah, Nick, uh, I would you want to at least respond to the fact that Dara is uh, not very enthusiastic about the idea of NM NMPC being fully operationally privatized. Okay, so there are a couple of things I will need to set the record straight. Uh, first of all, uh, I read my co-panelist says the same joint venture uh, management structure that uh, the NLNG has is the same that is in the NMPC. That is not correct. Uh, the joint venture arrangement which the NMPC has with the international oil companies is different. So I can give you an example practically. The NMPC Chevron joint venture is owned 60% by the government and 40% by Chevron USA. But it is Chevron that is managing that joint venture. So those who are running that joint venture are Chevron employees. And by the way, they are Nigerians mostly. So it's not about who we go here, you know, but because these are Nigerians with private sector background, they are, they are running the joint venture uh, uh, differently. And that is the same way the arrangement we share with Total Removal runs. The international oil companies are running the joint ventures. The NMPC is being run by Nigerians who are appointed by government. They are not private sector driven. Mele Kari, who is the group CEO of the NMPC, is appointed by the government. Nobody, no, government does not appoint the MD of Shell or the MD of Chevron or the MD of uh, NLNG. So I think that is the, the bit where uh, my, my co panelist uh, got his facts uh, missed, missed up. And, and secondly, we're not talking about handing over the management to, to, to foreigners. Uh, the managing director of Shell in Nigeria is a Nigerian. The managing director of uh, NNPC. I mean, NLNG is a Nigerian. In fact, the previous managing director, the immediate part, Tony Atta, but he's my very good friend. We work, we work together in Shell. And then the other thing I also want to say again is that the the the, the NNPC, the NNPC, as currently constituted, is not going to deliver any results. It's the same way that NITE never delivered any results. In the same way that the steel plants, all the steel plants in Nigeria today are not delivering results. This thing is not about the NMPC, it's about the fact that government is in charge. And when government is in charge, just like government mismanages every other thing, that same attitude of government will translate into what these companies are all about. Now, I also want to make another point here. You know, the oil industry is made up of upstream and downstream. These refineries that we're talking about now is the downstream side of, uh, of the oil industry. Have we asked the question about what is happening in the upstream? The upstream is firm, firmly, firmly in the hands of the private sector. Firmly. Those who are producing oil for Nigeria are private sector. And because they are private sector, we have never heard. Can we think back to 1950 when we discovered oil? To 2024. 
Has there been any day where we say Nigeria's crude oil production is zero? That means we didn't produce a barrel of crude oil per day. Answer is no. And what is the reason for that? The management of the upstream is in the hands of the private sector. And when we say private sector, we're not talking about it has to be able people. Nigerians have developed the capacity now and they are running this thing. So if we continue hoping that an NNPC that is being controlled by a national assembly, that you saw the way they were behaving as school children the other day, a, a government that is more interested in foreign trips and all of that, that that NNPC is going to do well. We could have as well have been hoping that NITE was going to give us funds until the MTS came to rescue us. <laughs> okay, let me go back to Are for his right of reporter. Uh, 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 this is not supposed to be. It's not supposed to be uh, uh, a contestation of uh, ideas between you and your colleague. But you seem the two of you seem to be positing uh, different uh, ideas about how uh, NMPC could be could be uh, revamped and, and be made to serve Nigerians properly or to to, to contribute is rightful this thing to the Nigerian. Uh, uh, coffers. How would you want to respond to Nick's uh, Nick's submission? Is that right, yeah? Yes, uh, well. Are okay, we seem to have lost Are. Oh, Nick. Nick. Uh, yes. Uh, uh, those watching this evening uh, with the general predisposition of Nigerians ideologically, the, the general abhorrence yeah. that Nigerians yeah. have to, when you mention the word uh, or the phrase private sector, when you mention uh, the phrase uh, or the word privatization, when you mention words like commercialization, an average Nigerian believes that it's also going to be, it's going to be exploitative against the Nigerian interest. And ironically, you know, just as you have, have methodically uh, itemized the things and the entities that are working to, to add value to us, to our quality of life, are institutions that are mainly run by private sectors. How would, uh, you know, how would you want to respond to the fact that an average Nigerian listening to you today will say maybe because he's well positioned, he may be one of those that they may they may head hunt to come and run <laughs> to come and run NMPC if quota were to be taken out of uh, the composition of his uh, of his management and his uh, staffing. Just thinking aloud I'm now. Actually, yeah, you're actually very correct that Nigerians are always apprehensive about privatization about private sector running things and things like that. Some people can even tell you that the private sector are capitalists and they will come and uh, they will they will come and uh, cheat us. They will you know uh, do deals and they will not give us value. But I, I like to draw Nigerians' attention to telecoms. It's a very good example. Nigerians who were old enough to know what happened during night days, you discover that there was no phone. There was simply no phones. So because there was short supply of phones, there was all sorts of racketeering with phones. Serious and racketeering. And NITEL will give you a line to your house. They will divert that line to a business center. <laughs> and the business center will be making calls and collecting money from people. And the government solution to that was they will set up tax forces on business centers headed by young majors. They will carry soldiers and they'll be shutting down business centers all around town. Nigerians who are old enough will remember this. You understand? And I tell people uh, one thing that I, I married my wife. My wife was in um, was in Abuja when I married her, and I was working for the oil industry in Worry. So when she relocated to Worry to meet me, there was uh, my wife had a Not Nine Not, which was Nitez, what you would call mobile phone of of today. My wife brought her Not Nine Not to Worry. There was no signal in Worry. I Nikagule returned my wife's not nine not to abuja and sold it for 150,000 naira more than 20 years ago 150,000 and the person i sold it to was a middleman he was going to sell it on for 200 250,000 which was money that would buy you five tokumbo cars as at that time 
That is government providing something for you. That is government providing something for you. That is nighter. How much is for now? Uh, but, but, the but Nick, sector, Nick, MTN and Co. Nick, the the, yes. the most common example that uh, the anti-capitalist ideologues, the most common examples that they use now are the discos and the uh, the discos and the gemcos. The gemcos are even performing, but unfortunately, uh, you know, the the, the, the the discos are not the best PR PR. Um, uh, this thing for for privatization in in the uh, uh, you know power generation uh, power distribution uh, industry. So they will say, ah, we but given the example of Nike, what that. about the discourse? We can address that very shortly, knowing that probably we don't have the time. I mean, we can have another session to talk about the electricity sector. Why it's not working? Why the privatization is not working? But in a nutshell, uh, as our viewers we know, electricity is in three stages. There's generation, there's transmission, which carries the electricity from the point of production. Which is still exclusively in the hand of the government. Uh, exactly. And then there is, uh, and then there is uh, distribution. distribution. Now, the reason why the electricity privatization is not working is because generation is largely okay. Generation was sold to serious-minded business people like the Tony Lumelos and the Ote Dollars of this world. They have the capital and the expertise to expand capacity. But the transmission, which is the one that carries the electricity, is in the hands of government. Exclusively. And the government is sitting on it. Government does not have the money to expand the capacity. And look, generation cannot generate what transmission cannot carry. And distribution cannot distribute what transmission has not given them. I can assure you that if President Tinubu takes the wise decision of leasing that transmission out, even if it is not outright privatization, leasing it out to the private sector who will come and expand the capacity, the electricity sector in Nigeria will start booming because it is a bottleneck. Transmission is a bottleneck. And then, and then, distribution was not done right. When people compare the discourse with uh, what is happening in telecoms, I tell them it's not correct. You know why? MTN, Etisalat, Airtel, all of these companies that got licenses for telecoms were already telecoms companies operating elsewhere. They had the experience, they had the expertise, they had the money, they had the technology. Tell me one company in the distribution, one disco, that was already an existing power sector operator before they got a disco license. None. Absolutely none of them. No, it was all it, the it was like fella, like fella would say it was a party party arrangement. So exactly uh, <laughs> the discos the discos were given to politically exposed persons. They the majority of them missed out on the privatization of the telecoms and they thought the discourse was where they were not coming on the bazaar. You know, they don't have the money to expand the capacity. They, they, even ordinary meters, they cannot even have money to buy the meters. So, you know where the problem is now. Let me tell Nigerians what the problem is. Before the privatization or the so-called privatization of, of uh, el electricity, there was only one NEPA in Nigeria. One NEPA that was doing everything. That NEPA had a single managing director and had a, a single set of executives. They were uh, distributing about four to 5,000 megawatts of electricity. Now, after privatization, we have about 10, 12 or more companies in the generation with 12, 13 managing directors. Transmission has a managing director. Then we have about nine or so discos. Each of them with managing director, executive directors, offices, and all of that. How much power are all these companies generating and supplying? 3,000 megawatts. So the cost is rising astronomically the output is not rising. The output is falling. And that is why the unit cost that is being forced down the throats of Nigeria okay, is let me, very let me, high. Let me quickly uh, pop over to your colleague. Are, he's back on now. Are, are, is Are on? I, I, I think uh, we may still be having... A situation with uh, with RX con RX connection. Uh, uh, Nick, 
Yes. Uh, you know, go ahead to to wrap up your point, uh, and uh, we we make it a day. Okay, so uh, to go ahead and wrap up my points for no. for the refineries. Are, are, are you back? Are yes, yes. Okay. Yes. Uh, yes. Must, with you. I'm on. You must have been listening to your yes. colleague. Uh, yes. He seems to to be taking a diametrically uh, yes. opposed position to your anti privatization, anti commercialization. How would you want to respond to some of the points he's made? Yes, I'm on. You know, you have, you have, you have, you have, you have said it all, that uh, the discos and jenkos are a bad sell to privatization. And I want to reiterate that uh, we can, what affected NMTG so that we don't lose the meat of our matter is the fact that the, 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 the sharing formula between the private sector that's on the offshore uh, and, 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 uh, and, uh, and uh, onshore are private owned company. But be that as it may, go and look at the analysis uh, that we brought out uh, maybe during one of our press co conferences against the NFCC. Over multi trillion dollars have gone down the drain. And that is why I'm now saying there is no way, anyhow, that you are want to bring on private uh, sector company, no matter how garnish you are building this thing. If you still, it can, and it can ever stand alone, it's still going to rest on government policy plans because there must still be government generated revenue from the private sector. So the government cannot wheel off its power. Whatever is going to be part of it because you are taking an example of telecommunication. Telecommunication is different from all like that. We are talking about oil generated but, but, but are, what are, telecommunications are, are, are energy driven generated them um, if, if can't any, count that uh, like the way we uh, must are, to count how many how many pounds of oil we are distinguished are, 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 if Saudi Aramco could privatize some of his some of his uh, shareholders yes. why would somebody like you be, find the idea of letting organic privatization in some respect happen to NMPC even when we have a, a proper privatization. You know, NMPC, ironically or paradoxically, is now NMPC Limited. And a limited, a limited liability company, to the best of my understanding, is ostensibly a private company. But you seem to be you seem to be happy with the chimera the chimera that NMPC is now on the one hand is claiming to be a private uh, a private animal but on the other hand we know we know that NMPC is just like uh, a parastata of the government and all the political Patronages, all the inanities, the corruption that be, bedevil such entities are very manifest in his in his operation. How would you respond to that, sir? Are... Yes, you know, I will. I will I'll still retrace the fact that um, you know it's a mixed breed of um, corruption between the NMPC, the Tibaos, who for still still see as I did that NMPC is still an ATM. In view of the fact that the government is intending to bring up the worry, uh, the Potaco refinery, we have the Cardinal refinery, we have the worry refinery. All this ought to be simultaneously due together. But I don't just want to be, you know, so that we don't lose the meat of the matter that by the end of March we'll see what NMPC will manifest. My own agitation is the fact that let there be total overhaul. If it is incorporated, NFC is more or less a private entity. So the same privatization we are talking about, NFC have hold and grandstand okay. presently. Uh, not let, let's, let's, let's get a point no, let, Let's get up. I'll come back to you to, to give the, you final. The, uh, the Nick. Of the day to day, Nick, Nick, how would you want so to... So that's where we have to just... Uh, 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 
that is about time. I'm not only against privatization. Hello, 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 hello. My friend. distinguished hello. about time we wrapped it up. Let uh, let's give Nick the opportunity uh, yes, to uh, Nick. How would you want to to close it? At least for this episode. Okay, so uh, to close it, I, I just want to say before I close to say that. Uh, 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 privatization does not make government to lose its power. Actually, that is the way it's supposed to be. Government is meant to be the regulator while businesses are to run business. So the regulating power of government is still there. Like in the telecoms now, uh, the, the NCC can shut down MTN. That's the power of government to regulate the industry. You know, so it, it, it doesn't mean that government will lose any powers at all. Instead, we are going to see efficiency. You know, a, a minister of communication t said, told Nigerians that telephone was not for the poor. And that was because government was mismanaging telecoms through night time. Now, we can't say that again, that telephone is not for the poor. Everybody has a GSM in their hand. Now, to close it on the oil industry, I want to, to, to set the expectations of Nigerians right. Potaco refinery, this Potaco refinery is the oldest one, is the old one. It is 60,000 barrels of crude oil per day. Is the smallest of the NMPC refineries. The one that is next door to it in Potako there is 150,000. 60,000 barrels can produce only about 1 million liters of petrol, maximum 2 million liters. Nigeria is currently talking about 30, 35, 40 million uh, liters of uh, consumption per day, depending on whose figures you are, you are listening to. So this thing is not going to change anything much. So the euphoria that is greeting this thing, I want Nigeria to manage the expectation. We will continue to import petroleum uh, okay, products okay. because one Nick, or two million have barrel, to go. I mean liters per day is not going Nick, to change Nick, the game. Nick, we have to go uh, at least uh, on one point you and I uh, seem to have agreed and that is the disillusionment about the projection of NMPC that they would, uh, they would uh, be fully operational uh, not that you don't believe them, but you want to wait and see. And, uh, and, and I guess uh, the two of you have also agreed, uh, in some respects, that at least the, the cost will be marginally lower, not tangibly, not something that will be substantially felt at the, at, at the pump price. Gentlemen, I want to say thank you for your contributions. You have been wonderful value adders. Uh, we respect your... Uh, seeming ideological differences but you have enriched the show today thank you uh, thank you very much and uh, uh, good night to our viewers and uh, we'll see you again sometime. thank you very much thank you uh, this is where we wrap it for today I am Bola Oba have a good evening <laughs> <laughs>